Um, oh my God, this picture. Um, I have to say, this is real me. And as you can see, it's quite a change. And now let's begin our topic. Just a few seconds. <laughs> Thanks. And now, even before I became a training school administrator and now the founder of a family education service center, I have always been fascinated by human connections. All of us have some point have been on public transport when we're just settled into our music, we are chatting with others, we are browsing the Weibo, when suddenly the air is pierced by the sound of a shrieking baby. It's really noisy, right? I think so. Now, I have watched all kinds of reactions to this, from the very sympathetic look toward the parents and to people who look annoyed or even frustrated, to others looking for ways to get away from this noise. But on a recent Chengdu Metro Line 2, I saw the most amazing reaction of all. A little boy, about three years old, toddled over to that screaming baby and offered him his pacifier. Wow, I thought, that little boy really heard and felt the baby's distress. And isn't that what all of us want? To be seen and heard and to have our needs responded to. That's the essence of empathy, and which is also the crucial reason why the baby has changed. Changing yourself to be a more empathetic person is rewarding. Many people don't know how to truly listen and empathize. So they choose the most familiar way of dealing with emotions, like tolerating or instilling principles, which doesn't work. However, if you have the ability to empathize, whether it's resolving conflicts with teachers, dealing with uh, handling disputes between classmates, or comforting a sad friend, trust me or believe me, you can be handy and become a master of interpersonal communication. Most people thought that the empathy was something that we were born with or without. But the truth is, you can change. Your ability of empathy can be changed to be better. With some training, empathy can still be cultivated. And today, I will share with you three techniques to help you improve your empathy skills. But before that, in order to better understand those techniques, let's first take a look at a case. One of our good friends, Arfa, just joined a new class and had some conflicts with a classmate, Beta. So she came to us to talk. She said something like, when I first arrived in this class, Beta was very kind to me, and we, went to, uh, we often went to dinner together. But there was an activity that needed to choose a person in charge. The teacher felt that we were both very suitable. After that, I felt that Beta started to alienate me. She went to teacher's office quite a lot, and I don't know if she was fighting for this opportunity. Sure enough, she finally became the person in charge. It was a waste of me to be so good to her before and I shouldn't have believed her the first time. Actually, this is a true story, just happened one semester ago. I need you to remember this story because we will use it as an example when we talk about those three techniques. Here we go. The first test technique is summarize. It's a generalization based on the understanding of the whole thing. Back to the story I mentioned. Just imagine if, at this point, we can retell it like, 
You mean you and this beta had a relationship before, but now for some reason you guess it may about the competition to you and her, and now you are estranged, right? When doing summarizing, we can use expressions like "you mean something" or "you just mean something," right? Or "what you say is something," right? Its purpose is to make the other party feel that. The information they output is effectively received by us, and at the same time, we can ensure that the information we receive is correct. Secondly, express our understanding of the other person's opinion. This requires us to put ourselves in the other person's shoes as much as possible to guess his or her opinion. Even if we don't agree, in the same story, from the description of our good friend Alpha, how do we extract her point of view? Here's the answer: We can infer that her opinion is that her classmate Beta is fighting,、uh, is playing tricks behind in order to compete for manager. Some people may directly say something like, "Beta is too bad." But if our friend Alpha still cares about the friendship with Beta, such feedback will actually make her uncomfortable. A good way to do this is to ask her whether the opinions we have inferred are accurate. For, exa for example, we can ask her a yes or no question, like, "Do you think Beta betrayed the friendship for the opportunity?" Of being in charge, and of course, I may have guessed wrong. In this way, Alpha will not feel offended, but can continue to follow our question. If we get it right, Alpha will feel understood, and we will have empathy with her. Now, let's move to the next part. Expre express our emotions. And ask the other person how they feel. When we show our emotions to each other, to the other person, he or she will intuitively realize that we are not only listening to them, but also have a further emotional connection with them. Back to the story. After listening to Alpha, the first reaction of some people is to say something like, or just comfort her rationally. There is no friendship in competition. This is normal. Why you take such small things to hurt? Such a statement will make Alpha feel that her feelings are not accepted by us. Because if she's saying that, she's too naive and too young, too simple. In fact, we can sincerely express our feelings to each other. For example. After listening to your description, I feel a little sad and angry for you. In this way, Alpha will feel that we are on her side and feel that we care about her. Then we can ask the other person how they feel. For example, how do you feel now after speaking? How are you feeling right now? Or would it be a little easier to speak out? If Alpha responds, it's really relaxing after talking to you. But I'm still a little worried about how to meet Beta every day in the class in the future. At this time, we can use this topic to continue to ask. For example, maybe Beta still cares about your feelings. Has she ever come for you? In this way, Alpha will naturally reveal more, and we can get more information accordingly. By this effective communication, empathy become less difficult, and all of us can do that. By now, we are familiar with those three techniques that can improve our ability to empathize. I believe everyone in this audience has the power to use some of them proficiently. And please imagine what implications there were. I mean, in the human world, if teachers, parents, classmates, schoolmates,、um, boyfriends and、uh, boyfriends and girlfriends could be could change to be more empathetic with with each other, 
I think the human world will be more loving and beautiful. Thank you.